Hi, this is Kelly from The Truth in Story, and today we're going to look at some books. <laughs> now, I have a degree in literature. Um, I also am two classes away, actually one class away, and a thesis um, to my master's degree in literature. So books um, have always played an integral role in my life since I found the library and will always play an integral role in my life. Um, but the, the books that I want to talk about ones are um, the books that I consider sort of the five books that had a major impact on my personal developing spirituality um, outside of any um, structure that I was raised with. Now I'm going to try to keep this relatively brief because it could get really long-winded. Um, but l suffice it to say I was raised um, for most of my childhood as a very comfortable Catholic. We only went to church when we were in town with my grandmother and then it was to a lovely little uh, Catholic street, literally you know, a few houses down from my grandmother's that we'd walk to and I have only fond memories of being a Catholic. When I was in fifth grade, when I was 12, my parents were saved um, into the fundamental Baptist religion. And I qualify that because I, I try really hard not to lump my, um, my upbringing into all Christianity because, you know, I have learned as I've gotten older that there are many, many aspects of Christianity, um, just like any other religion. There are many branches on that particular tree. Um, but the introduction that I had to uh, Protestant Christianity was through fundamental Baptist, um, which included, you know, no movies, no uh, secular music, no um, holidays. We didn't do Christmas, Easter, you know, those kinds of things. So it was it was a very far degree of Christianity as the word fundamentalist should um, connotate, <laughs> but. Um, and I'm not going to, and I ended up going to, after sixth grade, I ended up going to a small uh, fundamental Christian school um, where those ideologies were probably pushed more so than education. So I came to organized religion uh, from a very comfortable laid back Sunday, stroll to the church, um, not really thinking of it at all, to um, a religion that was very heavily laced in fear. And from that point on, religion and fear uh, were to be two aspects that were very tightly woven together. Um, and there were many catalysts towards me walking away from that, um, but suffice it to say, when my son was born, who was born very, very ill and was given a very short life expectancy um, and was sick his entire life, although he ended up living till he was nearly 24, um, with many health issues all along the way, but regardless, he did um, outlast many predictions that were made in his lifetime. Um, but when he was born, that was sort of the last catalyst that um, caused me to step away from organized religion completely. And at the time, I wouldn't have said that I was an atheist, but what I would have politely, as all good girls do, said was that I was not interested in any form of religion at the time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't bother. <laughs> um, because of the form of Christianity that I was raised in was very much black and white, very cut and dry. Things were very heavily labeled. Um, good people, 
were rewarded and bad people are punished. Um, none of these things uh, coincided or made sense with um, the world as a whole and certainly uh, with the issues and the pain that my son was suffering with. And I just simply couldn't deal with the juxtaposition of two things that simply just weren't working together. So I walked away from that for, for quite some years. I just didn't want anything to do with anything. Um, but these books that I just want to quickly go through, and I'm not going to, these aren't reviews on these books. These are just sort of uh, seeing a path um, of my spirituality that has um, led to who I am today um, that plays an impact in the role of uh, my spiritual center and who I am. And so the first one is a book called The Way of Weird by Brian Bates. Now this is not the, my original copy. I actually had uh, the first printing of this uh, that was um, eaten by a rabbit that we had years and years and years ago and then it was very difficult to come across another copy and then they uh, republished it in 2005 and I was able to get a hold of another copy which I am quite glad of and I really actually need to sit down and reread this because it's been many years but this um this book really focuses on a Christian so it's it's the context of it is that a Christian scribe is sent um, into pagan uh, England, so Anglo-Saxon England, but it was the pre-Christian, um, and he's sent into the forest, and he comes um, in contact with a pagan uh, sorcerer. Uh, I think he called himself a sorcerer, a mystic, very much a shamanistic um, of the old pagan philosophies. Um, and he gets with um, Wolf as his guide. He learns all kinds of things about um, paganism that they were, you know, he knew they were going in to convert and starts to realize things may not be exactly how, it's how he thinks. Um, the point is, again, my, my point is not to do a book review, but this book uh, was just a huge eye-opener for me to see the world in a bigger context. And more importantly, I guess if I would sum up the one thing that this book taught me, it was the interconnectedness of everything. It really made me take a look at... Um, that web i think that's even something that's used in this book this idea of of all of life being on a large web and when you you know touch one strand the um vibrations spread out across everything and these are um these are process thought processes and philosophical ways of thinking that end up really resonating with me at the end of my path which was uh, very heavily um, in in Buddhism, um, but it connected in a way to, which you wouldn't think to pagan um, shamanism. There was a, it was actually a direct connection to sort of the beginning of my path and the ending of my path. Um, but so that that sense of interconnectedness is, I guess, the one main thing that I would say that this book brought to me. And it also was that kind of first step outside of just not wanting to think about spiritual matters whatsoever. So this book was is extremely important to me. The next book, and it wasn't, you know, it was fairly close around the same time as when I read The Way of Weird. In fact, I think it was the second book I read right after this one. And both of these were, um, a friend of mine had the same person had told me to read both of them. And they knew where I was in terms of really struggling with with these issues and and especially in the context of suffering. And <clears throat> this book, which seems, I mean, it's the Tao of Pooh and I, <laughs> by Benjamin Hoff, and it seems like a silly book to have as one of your, you know, one of the five books that had a big impact on you. But it is, it actually is extremely impactful. Um, I kind of judge the importance of a book when I have both physical copy and the digital copy. <laughs> And that is the case of this book, um, and I've read it many times, but um, 
if I were to sum up again, like I did with this, what what I learned with with this one and from Taoism in general, and 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 the con the concepts behind Taoism still are very integral to um, my way of thinking. But at the time, what this <clears throat> this book taught me was. It, the power of letting go and I don't mean that in the terms of letting go as in giving up but it offered to me in a way some of the concepts of Taoism um, as presented in this book offered me the understanding that sometimes <clears throat> many times, and I would probably argue all the time, struggling in the midst of suffering, in the midst of something uncontrollable happening to you, struggling doesn't get you anywhere, except for expend energy that you really need to be able to put into other areas of your life. And that sometimes the act of falling in and relaxing in <clears throat> to a situation and going with the flow uh, of it is your strongest action and that helped me to stop asking this book helped me to stop asking why so much um, because <clears throat> it really wasn't the point <laughs> the why of everything that was going on with myself um, and everything that my son was having to endure um, really in the long run wasn't important it was more how 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 are we going to deal with this because this is something that we're going to have to deal with hopefully for a very long time and so this book um, really was the basis <clears throat> that allowed me to function not perfectly, but to be allowed me to function for the next 24 years because, you know, the, that letting go and saying, okay, this is what we have to deal with now. How are we going to deal with this um, with as much grace as we can and with the least amount of struggle um, that we can? So this book was really important to me for that. What's interesting is just as I was saying that the concepts that I, I learned in The Way of Weird, which was very much about Celtic pagan uh, mysticism, very much tied in with the concepts of Buddhism later on, and just in terms of interconnectedness of the world, a lot of the concepts I felt really tied in to sort of the beginning and the ending um, of or the latter part, I wouldn't say the ending, nothing ever ends, but the latter part of my spiritual path tied together in the same way that the concepts that I learned in uh, the Tao of Pu, especially with the understanding of having that ability to let go into a situation that we're in, like following a current. You know, if you find yourself in a, in a current um, in rapids and everything you're rushing down you're not going to be able to fight against that and you have to relax your body and just you know move with the flow and figure out how to work with the circumstances that you find yourself in and those same issues of learning to fall actually tie into a book that will would be at the very bottom of this pile of the last book but i can't find my physical copy but i do have uh, also it was one of those books that i have the physical and the digital copy but that is a book called learning to fall the blessings of an imperfect life by philip simmons and so you know at the end of my road at least at the end of my road with my son uh, a few years ago when we found ourselves in the position of literally um, having to learn how to shift gears from fighting uh, for life and learning how to fall into uh, waiting for death gracefully. Um, not something I will say that I mastered, but it was something that I was trying to get through and trying to function through. The same ideas behind the Tao Pu, and, it's, and this is a, a time in which I pulled this out again too, but the concepts that I learned at the beginning of Michael's life, um, I learned tied very closely into the same concepts in this book, Learning to Fall, by Philip Simmons at the end of his life. And they were very similar things for uh, very different times in my life. So 
I, I just think that's really interesting how things correlate together across, you know, 24 years. Um, so that would be my second book. Um, this, the next book that had such an impact on my spiritual ideology would so might seem like a strange one because it's not really religious in the sense of a religion although I personally I don't consider um, Taoism or Buddhism to be religion either I approach both of them as a philosophy um, but we have The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell and this is by no means the only book by Joseph Campbell that I read actually I think this is an interview with um, Bill Moyers, um, but his he has like the hero journey. Um, there's quite a few different books um, that he has written. Most people have heard of him at one time or another. Um, but this book was actually very um, seminal for me, just in terms of learning to see how all religions. Uh, all religious paths are coming from the same place. You know, there are certain questions and fears and wonderings that we as human beings simply have. And so no matter who we are, where we're from, or what time we're in, we have these same questions and religion um, which eventually becomes mythology. So the Greek mythology was the religion of their time. And you think of Roman mythology, that was the you know, religion of the time. These, all of these things are based around very human desires and fears and wonderings. And so being able to really um, get and understand the place that people are in and why they come to, to religion and understanding the sacredness of every of any space that you're in I credit to um, having read this particular book and again other other pieces or other books that he has written also um, so he this actually had quite the impact um, on my understanding of things, my dealings with archetypes. I um, mean, you know, I have since, you know, obviously read about Jung and his ideas of archetypes, but a lot of it, that initial understanding of archetypes and the very strong importance of them um, came from Joseph Com Campbell. This talks about myths being the world's dreams. They are archetypal dreams and dealt with great human problems. Um, so, Anyways, so that was uh, Joseph Campbell's The Power of Myth. Um, and that, for a long time, is where I sat with these combinations of um, a little bit of pagan mysticism, a little bit of Taoism, and uh, some scholastic uh, <laughs> approach to mythology and archetypes. Um, and that, that stayed that way for quite some time. Um, then I wandered into Buddhism, and I just picked this book. I have so many books on Buddhism. I have a huge shelf full of them. I have a stack here of just books, some of my books by um, Thich Nhat Hanh and Pima Chodron, which are probably the most of two particular authors that I have. Um, but I have so many other different books on Buddhism. But I do believe that this book is one of the best. If someone was, if someone were to approach me and ask me uh, for a book that they should read just to understand, you know, the basic concepts of Buddhism, I would point them to this book, simply because it does come at it as name implies Buddhism with without beliefs. I don't approach Buddhism, my personal approach to Buddhism is not one as a religion. It's at a, as a way of life. Um, it's as a um, philosophy with, with spiritual undertones of the rest of my insight, you know, how I approach spirituality. Um, and then this is just another aspect of that. And so I do feel that this book is, is and it's by Stephen Batchelor. I don't know if that's being cut off, but because it's kind of a taller book than the other ones. But um, 
uh, this so it's not this particular book so so to speak as in the entire pantheon of books on buddhism that i read over many many years um that had a huge impact on my understanding it was the, it was the first time although I, I feel in some ways i align even closer to taoism than i do um, Buddhism, but again, when you get down to the core precepts and the core understanding of things, but when I when I really started to look into Buddhism, um, it was that sense of coming home, and there was that sort of sense of okay, you know, there is something that makes sense to me that resonates with me, uh, that is in some degree organized and long standing. Um, and I learned a great deal with my from my study and many years of study of Buddhism. And so that so that that was number four. So that's where I stood for again. In terms of spiritual study, you know, that's kind of that was sort of where it ended. So there's this becomes this amalgamation between some pagan mysticism, some Taoism some archetypal understanding um, of mythology and Buddhism. And that sort of amalgamation became uh, sort of an expression, I guess, of, of who I am. Um, but I still had, at this point and up for many years, still had, could not approach anything even remotely regarding Christianity without uh, negative connotations. Um, there's just there were too many lenses in which I uh, were placed over my eyes regarding Christianity that were negative and that were fear filled that I just simply couldn't approach uh, Christianity without even though I knew some wonderful people that um, didn't exude that sense of uh, fear based religion that I grew up in, I still, when I thought of the word Christianity, it certainly had negative connotations. Um, so then this book sort of um, reflects a uh, letting go of that context. And this is called The Velvet Elvis, and it is by Rob Bell. Um, and it's again titled Velvet Elvis Repainting the Christian Faith and he has a lot of books that he's written a lot of uh, he was a preacher and a lot of sermons that he has put out on there and a series of numas uh, little um, small video uh, presentations that kind of tell a, you know, a kernel of something important um, that are fantastic and I watched many of them and by but you know by the end of this this look back into Christianity or into a different form of Christianity, it by no means uh, made me in any way interested in stepping back into uh, Christianity as a religion of choice, but it did allow me to see that there were people in the world um, who don't didn't stop the conversation of Christianity at Revelations that understood that Christianity was an ongoing conversation and an ongoing um, system of belief that um, can be reimagined and repainted with the understandings um, that we have today and which is exactly um, what people like Rob Bell are doing and many people in the world. And so um, this book is very important just in terms of reflecting that sort of laying to rest of lumping all of Christianity into one uh, extreme understanding of Christianity. Um, so that's why this book uh, will remain in my top books. And then, as I said, you know, the last book, so I guess I'm actually at one, two, three, four, six books. Uh, the last book that I would um, would say would had such an Im impact on me was Philip Simmons' Learning to Fall. Um, because he does actually tie in a lot of the same various sor sources uh, for spirituality um, as I do. He doesn't come from one specific aspect. Um, and this is written by a man who had Lou Gehrig's disease or, or um, ALS, which my uncle had died from. And 
he uh, so he knew he was dying there was you know that's sort of one of those you know kind of things and he knew it wasn't going to be a good or easy death and he actually lived quite some time it wasn't as quick as he actually thought it was going to be but um, so he had a long time to uh, prepare for dying and again we all should be like we are all dying from the moment that we are born um, but he he literally you know had that knowledge that death was coming and so he had to really learn how to fall into that and so I this book uh, really um, while I still never accomplished learning to fall into the death of my son very well it did help me through that process and it did I did learn a great deal and it had a, a huge impact and still has a huge impact on me so this um, would be the sixth book that I consider you know to be uh, uh, very impactful on my spirituality and I would say and I have these over here because I would say in in, in a way in a very real sense that um, a deck of tarot cards is also a book you know that's how I look at it like these are just leaves off of the story tree or leaves off of uh, from a book and these tie into all of the things all of the things that I've learned in my spiritual path are found because these are all the archetypes these are all the the bits and the pieces and the nuts and the bolts of of living and they deal with the interconnectedness of the world they deal with learning to fall and learning to deal with the situations that are out of our control and they deal with um, the powerful mythologies and archetypes that drive um, the human race to ask why and to question and to go to a tarot reader and to be a tarot reader um, they they just tie in with all of the aspects that have come together to um, make me who I am today and so and in a very real sense um, a deck of tarot cards is sort of my seventh book that has um, had such an impact on who I am today so there we have it I just wanted to do this almost an introduction I guess so you can see a little bit more as I'm making videos of where I'm coming from in terms of a spiritual path and how I've gotten to where I am today um, and I hope that this was of some interest. And if you have any books um, or you have your little top five of, of books that were impactful to you, I would love to see those. Leave them in the comics, comments below. And I look forward to interacting with you. And have a lovely day.